Banks are one of the biggest corporations in the entire world. They're basically the equivalent to the kings and queens. They have all the money, all the power, all the influence and control economies exceeding many states and nations all around the globe. When it comes to the world of finance, banks are not only able to print money, but they're actually encouraged by the government to do so. Banking is one of the least understood business models all through the history of humanity. Yet, these are the very same places where you and I plus the rest of the world dump our life savings into. I'm very sure almost everyone has heard of this business but don't know exactly how it works and the more you look into it, the more absurd realize it is. Here is the best part. You've probably never heard of the evil economics of banks for some reasons that are yet to get clear later on because after you watch this video you will soon understand the reality of the banking industry. How absurd it is, how it gained so much influence and control over the world and how did banking go from just a boring business model to the most powerful industry that has ever existed in the entire universe. But to start this well, we really need to delve into the past of why were banks created in the first place. Let's say you're in bed right now. You're thinking, how can you really make money? Then an idea strikes your mind. And this idea is to create a business. Whatever business you want to create, it's focused towards you profiting from it and make yourself some good money, right? The same is the purpose of banks. Though most people think banks are there for you to have a safe and convenient place to keep your money such that you basically don't go around carrying huge sums of cash. But Here's the reality. Banks aren't opened by their owners out of the kindness of their hearts to make your life easier. At the end of the day, the purpose of these corporations is the same as any other business existing in the world. The purpose of banks is to make profits for the owners and the name of the game is collecting interest. It doesn't matter where it comes from, even if it's from your credit cards or your mortgage loans to other businesses. And the more loans they have, the higher the interest rates which brings in more money to the banks. These loans aren't anything special at all. And by the way, the fact that these guys wanna make money doesn't necessarily make them bad either. But unlike any other business model that exists in the world, banks are the only ones that are legally able to print money out of thin air and they are actually encouraged by the government to do so. Now, this poses another huge question. How did banks even get to this point? How did they gain all the power they have over money? To understand this well, we still need to go back to the ancient times. We need to understand the evolution of money. Money. Money is a story. It's actually a story about the very thing that drives influences and controls our actions today. It's this small piece of paper that we all call money or maybe the numbers you see on your screen in your bank account. But grab a remote and rewind time far enough, here's what you'll find. Money never existed. Our ancestors purchased goods using a method we can't even recognize today. Payments first began with butter, a system of trading goods for other goods and services for other services a cow for a goat, a loaf of bread for a few fish, and so on and so forth. But this system had a huge problem. It relied on us wanting what the other person had. It relied on the coincidence of wants. So our ancestors realized that we needed a new medium of exchange to represent the value of items we wanted to buy, and eventually coins made of precious metals were created. Then. Thousands of years later, countries started using paper money that was backed by gold. In simple terms, your dollars would be backed by a certain amount of gold and you would exchange your dollars for physical gold that a country held in its reserves. This system was known as the gold standard. However, later in the 20th century, in 1971, the US officially stepped out of the gold standard currency together with a few countries which meant this paper won't be backed by gold anymore. It was now backed by a declaration from the government that it has value. And because we believe in the government strong enough, we also agree that we can exchange this paper 
for anything we want. This is actually what gives central banks the power, the influence and control over the money supply, making it easier to use monetary policies to respond to times of financial crisis. This type of money, the money we use today which is no longer backed by gold but rather our faith in the government is known as fiat money. Though there exist arguments for and against fiat money but the most important thing I want you to realize is that this fiat system relies on the trust in the government but what if you don't have that trust? Who do you turn to? It's actually this fiat system that gives banks greater control over the economy because they control how much money is printed. And when you pass by all these technical terms, the process isn't actually complicated. The magic happens every time you deposit money into your bank account. There is a lot of money in circulation in every economy. Most of it is created by banks in form of bank deposits. This is actually the number that appears in your bank account. The money that banks create isn't the paper money that you can literally touch and bears the logo of the government. Literally, not at all. It's actually electronic money that flashes up on the screen. That's if you check your bank balance right now at the ATM. These bank deposits make up 97% of all the money in the economy. Only 3% of money is still in the old-fashioned form of cash that you can barely touch. So, these guys can create money through the accounting they use when they make loans. Every new loan issued by the bank creates new money. I know, it's hard to believe, right? Okay. Let's say you want to take out a mortgage loan to buy a new home. The bank will not typically do so by giving you hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of banknotes. Instead, they will just credit your bank account with a bank deposit of the size of your mortgage. And at this moment, new money is created. It's confusing, right? Here's how it works. Let's say you get a paycheck of $5,000 and you deposit it into your bank account. Now, even if the only reason you deposit your money into the bank in the first place is because you expect to take out that money to use later. By the law, banks are only required to keep 10% of that $5,000 you deposited in reserves. And during the 2020 pandemic, the US government lowered this reserve requirement to 0%. This means out of the $5,000 you deposited, the bank has all the power to take out all your money and lend it out to people as loans. And if you understand that short little scenario, you now understand how banks print money out of thin air. So, wait a minute. That's it? Just deposits and loans, then boom, new money is created? Still a little bit confused, right? Hold on. Let's rewind and bring this to the present day world perspective. You started out with your $5,000 in cash. Let's say Bruce who wants the loan starts out with only $0. This means the total amount of money in the entire economy is $5,000. Then, you deposit your money into the bank due to various reasons. Maybe you don't want to walk around with it in cash and you don't think stuffing it anywhere is a great idea. You're not just giving the bank your money, you're just laying them hang on to it so that you have some convenience and peace of mind that you can use your money later when you want. But remember, banks aren't opened out of kindness of hearts by the owners to make your life easier. It's a business and it's there to make money. And since they are only required to keep only 10% in reserves, why would they just let your money sit there? Yet it could be out there collecting interest for them and making them more money. And so this bank says, look, we are in a world where our reserve requirement is 10%, which says that the bank only has to keep 10% of these cash reserves and then it can loan out the rest. And so it does that. That's its business model or a significant part of its business model. So they lend out 99% of your money to Bruce at an interest rate of 15% so that he starts a business. Bruce now has $4,900 in his bank account to spend. You still have your $5,000 as digits on your screen that you can still take out and spend anytime you want. In simple terms, what started out as $5,000 in money supply has magically jumped to $9,900 and the bank gets to collect 15% every month from the $4,900 they just created for Bruce from the money they got from you. Let me amplify this to make it clear. The banks make money by lending out money they created out of nowhere from your money. 
and there is still more. Bruce is just like you, he doesn't want to keep his money in his couch or bed. Here's what he does. Before spending his $4,900 loan he got directly from the bank into his account, he leaves the money on his account and guess what, the bank is there to make money. They keep part of Bruce's money in reserves and lend out the rest of the deposit which was based from your deposit. And when the second loan is created from Bruce's deposit, the money supply jumps from $9,900 which was created from the first loan to $14,800 with that second loan and guess who has the pleasure of collecting that sweet interest on all those loans? It's the bank. Just imagine that very simplified process out of the entire country in the entire world. They also have the modern banking system of fractional reserve banking which is a system operating in almost all countries worldwide under which banks take deposits from the public and are only required by the law to hold a proportion of their deposit liabilities in liquid assets as a reserve and they have all the liberty to lend out the remaining to borrowers to make money and since it's people who deposited their money to other people the money they lend out is basically money they created out of nothing that they get to collect interest on. Actually, that's what makes the banking industry so powerful today than any other industry in the world. The banking business is the only business where people enthusiastically hand over their life savings to you that you can legally create more money and then collect interest on the money just created. Interesting, right? So, you may be wondering. If banks have to keep a proportion of the money that they get from the customers, what if the customers want to withdraw more than the required amount of the deposit in the reserve? What happens? Well, this has actually been a problem all through the history of banking. It's known as the bank runs that are almost inevitable with fractional reserve banking because at the end point, people are eventually going to want their money back. So, to control this, the government put together the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation FDIC, to guarantee people that if the bank can give their deposits back to them, they will be insured up to $250,000 for each person at each bank. On the surface, this sounds great and sure to the bank which is making money with your money, but at least your money is guaranteed by the government, but also brings another huge benefit to the banking business. From their perspective. If depositors are always guaranteed by the government to get their money back, where is the incentive for banks to act ethically with their customers' money? What's really stopping these guys from being as risky as possible so that they can make as much money as possible when in the worst case scenario they will be bailed out by the government? Well, if you consider that you willingly hand them all your money, then they create more money out of nothing than lend out that made money to collect more interest to make more money for themselves and it's guaranteed by the government. It's pretty absurd. They are all centered in one way shaped all around us making money. Hi, I'm Dimorbe. In my opinion, I think if you want to make more money, it's actually important to understand how money works. Where does it come from plus what are the people doing? with their money. And by the way guys, this is just a tip of the iceberg. It's actually a simple scratch on the surface of the monetary world in this video. If you would want more of such content, drop a like on the video and leave your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe because the best is yet to come. More life pal.